So you trying to learn how to make some 8-bit beats in FL Studio. All right, I feel it. You're trying to up your production levels a little bit. You're trying to add a little bit of spice to the mix. You're trying to pull up on your homies and be like, yeah, those rage beats are cool, guys, but check out these 8-bit beats, man. Yo! Ooh, yo, oh, this shit. Is busted, yo, this shit is fire, crazy, man. Bro. Yo, oh, oh my shit. god. Yo, this nigga is going crazy, man. Do not worry, man. Your boy Screwball got you. I'm going to give y'all all the 8 bit sauce. And believe it or not, 8 bit beats are like some of the easiest to make, bro. You literally only have like four sounds to work with for real. But yeah, in order to make some fire 8 bit beats, you obviously need some 8 bit VSTs, you feel me? There's a couple really good 8 bit VSTs out there, like Chip Synth and Super Audio Cart, which is $35 and $150. U-Torn is always free though. You did not hear that from me. You did not hear that from me. There's also plenty of free plugins out there too. But if you're one of them crazy mad scientist motherfuckers, you can also use 3X Oscillator. I'm not gonna lie, I find myself using this plugin sometimes and I can make some fire shit for real. All you gotta do is just really do a lot of knob turning and shit like that. But yeah, I'm gonna show y'all three FLPs of mine and I'm gonna break them down, show y'all how I use the 8-bit sauce on there, you feel me? And yeah, so for this first FLP, I used the Mega Man sound font. I don't recommend using sound fonts though because they can be loud as shit for no reason. Why am I using one right now? I don't know. Don't worry about it, nigga. This beat may sound familiar if you watch my streams. You feel me? Just a nice, funky 8-bit beat. I'm finna, I'm finna show y'all the sauce. All right, I usually start out my beats with chords. You know, I use some uh, a simple square wave for this. I usually use a square wave for my chords when I'm making 8-bit beats and shit like that because it just sounds beautiful. Like, listen to this shit. Now to spice the chords up a little bit, I used this trick that the pros used back in the day. I just took the chords, copied and pasted them, and dragged them back a little bit to create a little delay effect. And I hit them with the pan action too, you got to hit them with the pan action. You hear how I was bouncing from one ear to the other? That shit's nice man. The second thing I added was a pulse wave to add a little bounce to the melody. Hey, you see how I soaked that shit in delay though? And I got the stereo separation 100% separated like your mama's legs, my nigga. Mm -hmm. When you're adding these extra melodies and shit, you might want to consider throwing some reverb and delay on it. Because, you know, using just straight up dry 8-bit instruments is going to sound kind of boring. You got to spice, spice it up, it up a, little a little bit, you bit. feel me? I think it sounds pretty good with the chords, especially with the delay, because it just, you know, it just... It just ups that bounce factor by a hundred, man. All right, here's my absolute favorite part of the beat, the plucks. Like, bro, you can't tell me that isn't like a nice cherry on top to this beautiful melody that we got. I know this doesn't count as 8-bit, but I added some strings just to, you know, add a little bit of ambience to the beat. Now, for this bass line, I use the saw wave. Your best bet is to use saw waves when you're doing bass lines because they just cut through the mix and they sound beautiful. But if you want to go for, like, a more softer tone, you can probably use a square or a sine wave. Sine waves oh are definitely God, great for, like... Oh. Ambient oh, shits, man. but like, when well, you want some crazy. Oh, yeah, with the three of us combined, nobody could stop us. Yeah, I want to use my magic whip. Yeah. You can't tell me you're not bouncing your fucking head right now, bro. Last but certainly, n last but certain. Oh, fuck. Man. Last but certainly not least, you have the drums, man. This is. This is fucking funky ass drums, man. That's that that's all I can say. All right. Uh there we go. That's the that's the that's the beat right there. I don't really have much I don't have I don't really have much else to say about that. Okay, that was kind of an ass example. Let me show y'all another beat.
All right, this is a pretty good beat right here. This is where the 8-bit goodness shines and shows its true colors right here, man. Check this out. For this one, I'm gonna go straight to the sauce, man. This is it right here. Them arpeggios is where it's at, man. Just listen to this. Using arpeggios like these are really good for 8-bit beats. I mean, it just like, it just adds like a whole, you know, video game retro feel to it. Like, it, it just hits everyone, you feel me? If you wanna know how to do this, pretty much you just throw this at like 1-6 beat and then you just, uh. You just follow the chord, man. You gotta make sure, make sure these notes are extremely short. You don't want that shit to be blaring like this. Make sure the notes are short and then you just follow the chords that you got laid down. But I haven't even shown y'all niggas the chords. Here are the chords right here. I used a square wave and I had the release turned up a little bit just to add, I don't know, just some, I don't even know what to say. I mean, just listen. Got a little bit of release to it. Let me see what VST I use for this. I use the Holy Grail right here, man. Jenny, this is an awesome VST. This shit is free too. You know what? I'm gonna link this shit down in the description so y'all can download it if you don't already got it. As you can hear and see, I got that release turned up on everything, man, because I really wanted this shit to sound like a piano, you feel me? But yeah, pretty much the chords are like E minor, 9th or 11 or some shit like that. I don't know. I'm not no music theory genius or nothing, but you just gotta, you gotta make sure you remember what chords you put down. Then you just lay them short ass notes down, you feel me? It'll sound something like that. Ooh, y'all hear that? Then you just select all those notes, then click on this little arrow thing and you can make it as fast or as slow as you want. Ooh, I know y'all hear that delay on there, man. I'm telling you, man, delay and reverb on some 8-bit instruments are like really the sauce. I don't use a lot of reverb, just delay, but you know, in special cases, you can bust out the reverb, but really delay it's where it's at, man. I don't know if you all use Fruity Delay 2. This is what I use. I know some people use like Fruity Delay 3 and Fruity Delay Bank and shit like that. They all look complicated as fuck, so I just stick to this one. This shit has gotten me through everything, man. Thick and thin, man, so. Let me know down in the comments below what delay you use. Here go to lead right here, man. This shit is beautiful. This is a, a sine wave that I got out of Omnisphere. Sine waves are awesome, man, because they can work as great bass instruments and they can work as amazing leads man just listen to this shit now see this beat isn't fully 8-bit this is just a beat where i sprinkled them little 8-bit elements on there you feel me this is pretty much the rest of the beat and as you can clearly hear none of this shit is 8-bit See, with this beat, I'm really just using the 8-bit instruments like fashion statements, for real. The rest of the other sounds and shit is like supporting pieces, like a black t-shirt, some black Levi jeans and shit like that. But like this 8-bit shit right here, baby, that's like the Louis V belt right there, my nigga. That's the Louis V belt. These square wave chords right here, this is the Jordan 11s right here. And this is your ugly ass Supreme bucket hat right here. Oh my God, bro. Oh, hell no, man. What the all right, ladies and gentlemen, on to the third and final beat. You already know, man, I had to save the best for last. This is actually one of my favorite beats of all time. Check this out. Now you know what's crazy, this beat sounds like an 8-bit beat, but it only has one 8-bit sound in it, and that's this square right here. As you can hear, I got that release turned up, man. You see that shit? That shit is turned up. But now listen to this melody without the square. That shit sounds dry as fuck, you hear that? Man, that shit's crazy, man. That's how much an 8-bit sound can carry a beat.
That's some real deal shit right there, boy. All right, if you made it to this point of the video, I just want to say thank you. You're fucking awesome. Uh, I hope some of you learned something from this video today. And if you did, go out there and make some fire-ass 8-bit beats. I'm telling you, man, the bitches gonna fold when they hear them 8-bit beats, man. I'm telling you. If you do happen to make some 8-bit beats, feel free to send them to my Discord server. I'll pop a link on the screen right here. Boom. There you go. The link is also in the description. You feel me? Every Friday, I try to listen to y'all beats live on stream. And the reason why I say try is because lately, I have haven't been doing that shit i ain't gonna front with y'all but i did come back and do a stream a couple days ago it was awesome but by the time i edit this video and get it put out a week will probably pass so i i don't know i'm gonna be streaming though so if you want to have your beats heard on stream yeah follow me on instagram twitter and soundcloud screw stash everywhere you feel me listen to my music if you haven't already and let me know down in the comments below what you'd like to learn how to make next you feel me yeah thank you for watching the video bye